Uh, you know, every time I get up there, there's a lot of things I wish I'd said and some things I wish I didn't say. And I was probably a little too harsh against the teacher. Well, no, I should you can't be too harsh against the teacher's union. But I do want to be supportive of teachers. I, I want, uh, you know, I want teachers to teach. I want them to have more autonomy. I'd even like to give them more money. But I want to deconstruct a lot of what's happened to our government and allow people to be free. The one thing I need to do in the next debates is paint a picture of what it is that I'm proposing. That and, would be wonderful. And, you know, the, the things that I'm going to get rid of... I know that's something that people would like to hear, at least some of the people that I've heard. Especially my generation. We, we, I've been reading my daughter's textbook, uh, her government, to, through this journey, and I'm reading the whole first chapter, and it defines all forms of government, you know, a democracy and a monarchy and all these things. The very last paragraph, it says, for our purposes, they said we're a democracy through the uh, whole chapter. Mm. La very, very last paragraph of the first chapter says, some people would call the United States a republic, but for our purposes, they mean the same thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, th you know, we've been told that yeah, yeah, yeah. we need all these wonderful programs. We need government. So, so and during the next debate, you're going to outline some specifics on how we can go back to a, a constitutional how do we a constitutional state. And it's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate that I have to to go through the process of shifting the paradigm where we've been taught some stuff that ain't so, and we're, we're given information that leads us in an opposite direction, and I have to not only deconstruct that, but then I have to paint a picture that nobody alive has ever actually experienced. You know, the, the freedom that I'm talking about, and the social yeah, mechanisms... Yeah, they say it's old that, and out of date. But, you know, we've gone back before Hammurabi. You know, we have gone back to our native default state, and that is ancient. There's nothing new about that. Well, at least if you win or lose, you're out there educating. Just oh, and we appreciate that. And we do appreciate that. That's that. our fight. Well, that's, yes, absolutely. Well, look for more people like me, because this isn't about me. It's, you know, every election is made out to be about candidates and their funding and all of that, but it's about voters. It is only about voters. You have one day to tell the government what you think. And if you tell the government, you know, Democrat, Republican, you're doing okay, you've wasted your vote. But what about the people who say, I'd waste my vote telling what I thought if I voted you for know, you? I'm yeah, not buying you don't that. have a yeah, shot to win. Yeah, 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 you don't have a shot to win. You know, after you a hundred years of betrayal from the major parties, you're telling me that's not a wasted vote. That's not a wasted vote, I guess. That's shooting yourself in the head. After a hundred years of betrayal, enough is enough. And I'm with you. It, it should be totally with whoever person has the philosophy that you believe in, you should vote for them. It's well, it's not even the philosophy I believe in. I'm putting the Constitution on the ballot. If you want the ballot, you can vote for the Constitution. That's what I represent. And there are a lot of other people now... But it's scary to people because people have not lived... You're right, in my lifetime, we've not lived by this. Property taxes have probably been at least here for the last 34 years. We've been ripping this up page by page for 100 years. And I guess it's coming to the point, do we care or not, right? It's your choice. You can put it back anytime you want. You know, it's, this is what you're doing on, on election day. You're deciding what you want. And say, well, get a copy. Like, get a copy. We have copies state. of them. They can go to see the politics. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, because we use the internet as well, get a copy of your state. If you're not from Indiana and you want to make a change, you want uh, your government back into the hands of your people, your neighbors, you want to bring this back to the people, if, if you're someone powerful enough, you got enough time, do what he's doing right here. And, and I'm going to run out of time. The last big question is... As uh, a Republican, as a Libertarian, <laughs> as a Democrat, <laughs> go back to the Constitution. And my last big question then is, uh, what about the federal government? What would you do as governor? Hey, I swear an oath to both the Constitution of Indiana and the United States of America, and states are the owners of federalism. It's not the Supreme Court. States, as Jefferson and Madison themselves asserted in 1799 with the... Virginia and, and Kentucky resolutions. They said, if you guys don't stay on your side of the fence, if you don't obey your part of the contract, we will dissolve the union. So if President Bush decided to call up the National Guard of Indiana and send them to, let's say, Pakistan? Well, constitutionally, there is no National Guard of Indiana. There is a, constitutionally, there is a militia that is comprised of all persons. I mean, it, it's all in here. I can call up a militia that is an Indiana force. Constitutionally, there is no standing army. Now, that is scary, and I'm not going to go there unless, you know, things are totally out of whack. So I'm not... How do you stand up to the federal government? I mean, is it possible? You know, there are states... If it weren't for other states doing it, I wouldn't even be talking as boldly as I am right now. But there right, are I think states... Oklahoma. 
There are 20, I believe 22 states now have said no to Real ID. Okay, so we need to look at Real ID. I think we've Ohio talked about one. Ohio. Um, and Good there job, are Ohio. several <laughs> states, there are several states, including Oklahoma, that said, you know, you guys get back on your side of the fence about immigration law. I think it was about immigration, yes. the 10th Amendment. You haven't dealt with it, so we're going to, and then they tried to say, no, you can't. We said, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's, I wouldn't be the only one. Um, I so believe. you feel you have allies to help in that? Well, effort. let's look at it this way. Melissa, well, we're big talkers. Let's give her a chance to ask a question. <laughs> Finish your thought. <laughs> well, if for me to get elected, we're talking a paradigm shift and an epiphany of a major sort. What we're talking about is voters saying, doggone it, we're sick of y'all. We want the Constitution. We want to vote for Andy. And for them to actually do it, they're doing all the work. It would not be me. Well, the epiphany is happening. It's just happening a lot slower than any of us at this table would like. And actually, for some people, I don't know where he is because I'm new to the whole thing from, like, Dr. Paul, who I, right there. he says that it's actually accelerated in the last year, which has been exciting. Uh, absolutely. Cause he, I, I when I started this 15 years ago or so, it was weird to talk about the Constitution. Even libertarians were telling me, Andy, shut up. Nobody's read that. <laughs> so, you know, I, so it's at least been fun in that sense to see that yeah. there are people, Republicans, Democrats, libertarians, that are finding the Constitution. Yeah, libertarians have always been about that. But, you know, the, the point is, it's not weird anymore. 